Hello everyone, welcome to a brand new edition of YouTube Take. I am your illustrious and glorious happy Miami football fan host, Big Red 310, with my two friends at the moment. What's up, Nightmare Baller 1? In six minutes it'll be my birthday, y'all, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Woo! Are we sing? Oh, uh, we sing? I don't We're going to sing, don't worry. But <laughs> no, 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 don't do that. <laughs> we won't sing, do we that. won't sing, we won't sing, we won't sing. Oh man, and yours truly, Nightmare 10, is in the building. Alright, uh, anyways, gentlemen. Here to talk all the happenings in the world of football. Uh, let me first open this podcast by saying, and we'll talk more about them in a little bit. I've been a miserable, miserable, pessimistic, sad University of Miami football fan and Miami Dolphins fan. And right now they're both 3-0. and And that could very well change by the next time we do this episode. So I just want to, at this moment, enjoy this partial temporary moment of happiness in football which I never get to see and say life is good moving on recapping the weekend very basically this episode is going to be mainly focused on reviewing last weekend and previewing this weekend recapping last weekend a lot of big games happened we'll talk a little bit about them we all finished seven and six for the first time ever um we all had the same record one by one we'll go down and talk about the games very quickly uh, briefly, we'll have us all do our weekend recap of our teams like we always do. Markeem, start us off yeah. with the Eagles and Chiefs. Um, that pretty much went how I told y'all it would. Like, we, we, we're not better than them. You know, I know it was a home game, but they're a better team. It, it is what it is, man. You know, um, I mean, not much else to say. You know, we, we got thoroughly beat down. It is what it is. Bill. You want me to talk about the Eagles? Or? Yeah, we always, we okay. always all like just all right. very quickly. Um, no, I, I mean, I, th I think I picked the Eagles in that game, but yeah, we um, both did. And I do think if the Eagles could have done had an offense, or or they have an offense, but if they could have done more on offense, uh, they might have would have won that game. But can't look. Reed's doing. I gotta. I got. I gotta tap it off. I still don't think Chiefs making the playoff. But right now, they're proving me wrong week by week. So we'll see. We'll see how much it continues. Um, I will say this, uh, as a quick, I don't want this to start any big discussion or anything, because I think we all agree anyway, but can I, I, I've seen more of it now, uh, I know Markeem has gotten, has seen it, but can we stop with this, uh, Alex Smith and Kaepernick crap? Like, just because Kaepernick's losing does not mean, like, yeah, Cap Kaepernick has also played way better competition so far. Exactly. Oh. And, and, Three playoff like, teams, the Chiefs have played none, so. Totally different quarterbacks, too. And they're coached in a totally different, like, no. Anyways, I just want to add that because people, I'm seeing some stupid stuff. Stupid. Yeah. Um, yeah. For those who do not know, there's an article, and I could post it, but it's not a big deal. From NFL around the league, which, by the way, if you do not follow NFL underscore ATL on Twitter, you really should. It's basically the main. It's like the writers of ESPN that write for NFL.com, and they do really good stuff. They have really good podcasts. But anyways, they post an article that if you look at Colin Kaepernick's Twitter account and you go Kaepernick seven. And if you go to his favorites, all the tweets he's favorited are people that are completely insulting him, saying we were wrong to get rid of Alex Smith. You're just not ready to be an NFL quarterback. You're a one-hit wonder. All this stuff. And uh, he's using it as motivation. I mean, but it's just, in all honesty, though, I saw many articles on this. He does not have a lot around him right now. Like, and I talked to Stevie Breach, a friend of ours, on Skype yesterday because I wanted his opinion because he's a Niners fan. And he told me Kaepernick has issues. Like, he, he rarely goes past his first read. But the reality is that Kaepernick doesn't have a lot of talent. And I agree. Right now, Ver Bolden, Vernon Davis being down is the biggest thing, man. When Vernon, like, scram scrambling quarterbacks, their, their go-to target is usually the tight end. Tight end. The tight end ain't playing, you know, so. They have Crabtree and Mario Manningham who are both out for an extended portion of the year. So you got Anquan Bolden. And once they match up on Anquan Bolden, so, I mean, they don't have Ted Kim, but he's not a big deal anyways. Legitimately, their other options are Kyle Williams and Marlon Moore. Marlon Moore was the Miami Dolphins' fifth-string wide receiver last year. He barely made the team. He is currently their number two, number three receiver. This, they have problems. They need, And they have Alden Smith leaving. Ian Williams, their nose tackles, out for the year. They have a lot of injuries. Now, Kaepernick should be playing better than what he's playing. Have no doubt about it, but they're just going through some struggles, and they're playing some really tough teams. People are overreacting. Wait, the Patriots, as much as I hate them, 
and the Packers were both 1-2 and two at this point last year. And the Patriots made it to the AFC Championship game, and the Packers made it to the Divisional game. This means nothing. But anyways, we'll move on to my team, the Miami Dolphins, who beat the Atlanta Falcons at home. Um, the Dolphins look terrible most of the game. The offensive line, I'm going to go on record and say is the worst offensive line in the NFL. And I know Mark no. I know he's going to bring up the Colts and the Packers. And all I have to say to that is we have we've allowed the most sacks in the NFL. Uh, Tannehill is the most sacked quarterback in the NFL. And but, have, but but a lot of that has to do with, with Tannehill yes, not being good. Yes, yes, yes. Friend. No, it's true. Tannehill's pocket presence is very weak. He holds onto the ball way too long. And our running backs and our tight ends can't block to save their lives. Lamar Miller, Daniel Thomas, and Charles Clay, and Deion Sims all can't fucking block at the line. It's embarrassing. The Falcons, who don't exactly have a renowned pass rush, just obliterated us. But another thing is, our running game is the 30th ranked running game in the NFL. Jesus Christ, I didn't know that. Yes. So Shit, not man. only are we allowing the most sacks in the NFL, we have the 30th ranked rushing attack in the NFL. And which, which means, I don't know the other team, but which means you're bet, you have a, a better running game than the Giants. I don't know what the other team is, but I know the Giants are last. Well, yeah. But uh, the other team, I think... It was and, the Falcons. And, 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 and this season, Russian numbers are down across the board. That's they really kinda, are. Yeah. That's kind of sad. Yeah. Oh, kid. Oh, kid. No, I know. It's an issue. That's why we have the worst offensive line in the NFL. If not the worst, one of the worst. And, yes. Should have mean, Jake Long. Hey, Jake Long. But Jake Long, Long. Jake Long got murdered, apparently. I didn't see the game. I won't lie. But many people said that he got killed uh, with by the Cowboys. He allowed like five or five or six hurries, like three sacks, two holding penalties, something ridiculous. He played terrible, apparently. Um, Touché, I didn't, I didn't hear that. People, and I've heard many people say that, oh, this is why we should have gotten rid of Reggie Bush. Reggie Bush isn't playing right now, and Reggie, Reggie Bush would struggle. Reggie and Reggie and, Bush would struggle too. And, and Reggie Bush isn't a running back. <laughs> he's a he's a wep- he's a weapon. Yeah, I mean he's a multi-purpose weapon. He's, he's a, a semi he's a semi-automatic weapon on Call of Duty. You can use for every situation. That's what he is. He's not he's an he's not, a, he's not a shotgun. He's not a light machine gun. He's not a sniper rifle. He's a fucking semi-automatic weapon. That's what he is. He's an assault rifle. That's what he is, an assault rifle. I I would agree. But yeah, we're struggling a lot right now with our line and our defensive line is going through some rough times. Cameron Wake is out this week. Uh, he was out for the Falcons game. Paul Soliai, those of you who don't know who he is, the listeners, Paul Soliai uh, was a pro bowler last year, for everyone's information. He's been in the league for five years now. Very, very good run stopper. One of the best in the NFL. A great defensive tackle. He's out as well. So for the Falcons Tra- game... Trademark's like, who's that right now? <laughs> <laughs> so for the Falcons game, we had to play Derek Shelby and Vaughn Martin. Now you guys are like, who's that right now? <laughs> no, I, I know who Derek Shelby is. You know who Derek Shelby is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But he's, you know, I know him for being awful. He, he's better in the NFL, so you know. But yeah, he took over for Cam Wake, and he did okay. Uh, Von Martin um, is also out for the year now. So now we have no defensive tackle. Uh, now we're bringing in Marvin Austin, I believe, former second round pick for the Colts, to save the day. But right now we have no starting defensive tackle. And Deion Jordan also pitched in, and Deion Jordan played really well, um, really well. But nonetheless, our offensive line can't block, and our defensive line got obliterated. The Falcons, I would say, have been the worst rushing team over the past, like, four years. And they just looked amazing against us. They had more rushing yards in the first half than they did in the last two games combined. They, they didn't have Steven Jackson. They, no, without Steven Jackson, yeah, with Jason <laughs> Snelling and Jaquiz Rogers. Like, they, they obliterated us obliterated us. So our offensive line played terrible and our defensive line played terrible. How the fuck did we win? Ryan Tannehill. In all honesty, no other... Oh, and, and the turnover on special teams, but in all honesty... The one-handed catch. What? The one-handed catch in the end zone for the win. Oh, but Deion Sims? Yeah, Sims. that was impressive. That was impressive, but Ryan Tannehill played really well. He played amazing. Yeah, 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 that was impressive, like the best player of the weekend. He's like, oh yeah, that was, that was impressive. Yeah, that was number one. <laughs> Wait, no, the Deion Sims catch? Yeah, that was, well, that was that was like the best play of the weekend. I would say no, it is. wasn't that the the Antonio the Antonio Brown catch. Help me no. out. Uh, that one, I mean, eh. dude. Hey, Nick? I, I, that is debatable. That was a good catch too. But 
Antonio Brown catch was insane. I would say they're. I, I would say it, it depends on which one you think. But no, no, no. They, it was that. That one won the game. I mean, yeah, but it was a one yard <laughs> touchdown. I mean, I don't know. That, that won the game. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I would put it number one. I mean, I, I, I get what he's saying with Antonio Brown. But anyways, anyways, um, moving past that, um, the Tannehill played amazing in the fourth quarter. He is carrying our team single handedly right now. We just look like the inferior team all game, and somehow we won. How does that happen? Great quarterback play. Right now, I was talking to Markeem. Of the three and O teams, of the three and O teams in the NFL right now. I argue Ryan Tannehill is the better MVP candidate than almost all of them, with the exception, obviously, of Peyton Manning and maybe one or two others, because we are not playing well, and we're 3-0. and We are nowhere near playing as good as we can. We have been outgained in yards in every game. The last team to do that and still win three games in a row was the 2012 Arizona Cardinals. What happened to them? So... Uh, you better hope the same thing don't happen to you. <laughs> I, that, hopefully, hopefully that will not be the case this time. But, anyways, uh, we're not playing that well. But, like I said, um, uh, like I said, uh, what's his name? Fucking Tannehill's playing really well. And that's all that matters sometimes in the NFL. The Miami Dolphins used to be the team that would find ways to lose. Find incredible, amazing ways to lose games. And now we're finding ways to win. And that's the sign of being a great team. So, I'm happy. I'm very happy. Tough game this week, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, either of you two have any comments on the Dolphins? Uh, I, I I saw them firsthand against the Colts. I didn't watch that uh a game this weekend though, but um they they're they're for real. Like I mean, there's not much else to say. Anybody that is not sold on them yet, y'all need to wake up because they're for real. I'm not gonna be like the kid and just you know suck them off all, but nah, they're <laughs> yes, they're for that, real. That's what I spent the last five minutes doing. <laughs> I'm, pl- I'm, uh, playing, I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. Them. I'm playing. I'm I'm playing, kid. But yeah, they're for real, man. They um. <laughs> When they all get healthy, people see that a little bit more. Yeah. Um, how, how long did Deion Jordan play? Like, did he play he played, most of the snaps? He played most of the snaps, yeah, and he was the third highest ranked defensive end of the weekend by Pro uh, Football Focus. Yeah. Well, so maybe, maybe he just, I don't know what happened at Oregon then. But yeah, yeah, they're, they're good. They're a really good team. Arguably the best in that conference right now, arguably. Uh, I mean, if you want Ar- to. Arguably. Hey, your AFC Championship game right now, I mean, based on. I mean, we didn't play well last week, but we played pretty well the first two. And I mean, I mean conference. I meant division. Are arguably the best in that division right now. Arguably, <laughs> Argu- arguably, Phil. I know and you can make that argument. I'm not. See, see, see that segue? Go ahead, Phil. Anyway, so now's my turn. <laughs> oh no. Um, but you got anything to say about the Dolphins? Though? As far as the Dolphins, I mean, like Markeem said, I, they're legit. I thought. I mean, I was with, with Big Red anyway, saying I thought they were up and coming team if Tannehill plays good. So. Um, I do think the defense has to stay healthy. Um, that's obvious, but that's really for anything, any team. Um, there's something else I was going to say. Um, oh, I was going to say, I think uh, Big Rat has said this before, but I think the Dolphins are at a spot where they can beat anybody uh, or lose to anybody. Yes, that's, yes, yeah. definitely. And I, and I say lose to anybody, I'm not, that's not anybody, but, you know, like, I would say, like, you know, any of the contender teams. No, like, no, no, that, that, it's close to anybody, but yes, yes. But anyway, yeah, I, I just don't, I don't I mean, I'm saying they're not going to lose to the Jags. That's what I'm talking about. But yeah, anyway. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ain't, ain't nobody going to lose to the Jags, shit. <laughs> I don't know if they're winning the game. Anyway. To be fair, we said that about the Saints last year. But to be fair also, that was before they got their interim head coach, Joe Vitt. Uh, so that changed once he was their coach. But I remember when they were 0-4, we were all saying, man, are they even going to win a game this year? No, y'all were saying that. Remember, I said they still. <laughs> oh no, I think yeah. Didn't you say they would still? They would. They would yeah. not go. They would, the Saints are not going worse than nine and seven, and we'll make the playoffs. Yeah, they finished what? What eight and eight or seven? Seven. Seven, seven and nine. nine. Seven, seven and nine. So yeah. Anyways, but um, yeah, the, the Dolphins are legit. Honestly, they're. I mean, I, I'm I'm looking forward like I'm I'm looking forward to the games against New England. Like I think like I'm really excited about those games. Like. Oh, yeah. And it's really and honestly, right now, like I've hated the Dolphins in the past, but the Dolphins are like the only team in that division I don't hate. <laughs> I hate. I, the, would, I hate. really wish I could say the same. I know you can't, and that's <laughs> obvious. I mean, the, you, you got to hate the powerhouse of the division. <laughs> okay. Hey, but hey, but at least maybe you guys can win the division not with a star. Fuck you. But continue, <laughs> continue. But anyways, all right. So what's next? Me? Uh, hey, now, yeah. Now you talk about the Patriots. Okay. Um, watch this game at at good old Beefs again. Um. Uh, it's become my 
place. <laughs> the good old beefs. <laughs> good old beefs. Go to your local beef up Brady's. That's our sponsor this week. Um, no, uh, I watched the game. Finally, like the off, like the offense click a lot better than they have in the last uh, two weeks. So I was proud about that. Um, defense played great. Now Josh Freeman is Josh Freeman, and that's obvious. But um, I do think the defense did good for what they for what they are. Um, Stephen A. Smith said this. You know, say say what you want about who they're playing, but the defense has made a huge stand. I mean, they're sixth against the pass. I know they haven't played great. They're teams. second. They're second against points. But they're six against the pat. That's still saying something. But I do bring up the, their talent, who they played. We'll get to you know their. It's, their it's not the, it's, to me. It's not the teams they've played. It's the quarterbacks they've played. Well, right. That's what arguably right. the three worst quarterbacks in the NFL right now, with the exception of whoever the Jags had a quarterback. Are there <laughs> worst quarterbacks? <laughs> <laughs> whoever the Jags have, it doesn't even matter. Like whatever they put like, out there this week. Whatever the Jags have on their roster, is there a worse quarterback right now than two rookie quarterbacks and Josh Freeman? <laughs> no, you're right. Yeah, I agree. That's my I, argument. Everyone says, "Look at the offenses they're playing." It's not that big of a deal. They're division games. It's not the offenses. It's the quarterbacks. But yeah, continue, continue. But yeah, I agree. Um, I think, and they 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 have a literally a tough. I don't want to hear anything anymore about easy schedule because the next five six games oh, are hard. The next three yeah. games are brutal. <laughs> yeah, the next three games are brutal, and we'll we'll, we'll get to that we'll get maybe to that. next week. But um, I was impressed with what we did. Um, I still think you know. For some reason, when it started the game, I thought we weren't even going to run, which I'm like, okay, Belichick, let's let's calm down. He ended up running the way he's the way he's controlling the running backs is t- typical Patriots football, but really needs more carries. That's all I'm going to say. Um, but I understand we have you know Blunt, we have uh, Bolden, and guys like that, but he needs more carries. Bottom line, Garrett Blunt, I got Legarrette Blunt. Yeah, that guy, that guy that likes to punch people. That dude, <laughs> he was punching people. His former team, he was stiff on him in that game. That, that dude was power running. Well, I didn't know that. But anyways, um, but yeah, I, th- I thought it went good. I think uh, finally some receivers like Kimmel Tompkins has a lot of potential, man, and that showed it in that game. Um, and it showed. I think that game showed like if everybody clicks, like that offense. I'm not saying that offense is a is a is a top you know top three offense in the league or anything like that. Um, but it's 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 definitely a th- a lot bigger threat than people I mean, you know, when they're dropping balls and stuff like that. Um, then you add Gronk and then if Amendola comes back, that kind of thing. Um, but I'll stop drooling. <laughs> it's my little drooling every once in a while. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, Tampa's Tampa. So I mean, like I said, I want, I'm ready to see this week is really is really a big a week for me because I think Atlanta has a good offense. So we'll see. Um, but well, I was Atlanta, about what, Atlanta definitely has a good offense. Right. <laughs> Is, is it safe to say they're the best one we're going to face? I think so. <laughs> or the best one we're facing. Uh, the best one you face so far, yeah. I don't know. I said totally. No worries. But, yeah. So, that's all. I mean, I can add some stuff later for the preview, but I think that's okay. what I wanted to say. Um, Aaron Marquis, you got anything to say about the Patriots? Uh, nah. All right, then. <laughs> oh, I, will say, I will say this, and I'm going to sound like a fanboy here. Um, but I, I would make a case Brady as the MVP right there with Dan, uh, uh, Tannehill, though. You put, uh, come on, son. Like, look a little, but, he, but, is, but, but, but Brady hadn't played well. Like, but yeah, that's what I was gonna hey, say. Bro. Brady's numbers aren't good. Like, like I, I get what you're saying, Phil. Like, uh, we if we're going on strictly most valuable though, if that was it, you know what I mean? Then yeah, I, see, I can see, I can see your point. Right. Well, I mean, like, he just, his, but, his like, numbers aren't good. He's missing receivers. Didn't he? Do you saw him finally? But, you know what though? Let me say something about that though. And I'm not. This isn't. And this isn't me being a fanboy. I'm just pointing out. You know, like g- great quarterbacks miss passes, and I think the only reason why he's being pointed at, at like the his is being pointed out so much now is because he, his receivers are are missing, and people are saying, well, receivers are like missing, and so p- the people that don't want to support Brady are now coming out. And I'm not saying that that's the only reason, but now they're coming. They're like they got to point out every throw he misses. Like dog, dog, dog. It, it, it's, it's, it, it, it's a chemistry issue, man. That's all. Right. Like yeah. like people people are making it bigger than what it is, man. Like well, all I know is Tom Brady's completion percentage has been down every year. Oh, shut up, years. Spinner Net. Son, That's what you dropped. sound like. He's like spinning it right now. Well, I do, I do feel compelled to make this point. Do you know three one year, like from one year to another, like that's not. Do you know what Brady's? Do you know what Brady's completion percentage ranking is right now? Probably not good. Twenty seventh. But it's like I'm just not. Anyways, I 
I, I don't want to like I, I sound like a fanboy and as it, uh, nah, on both. You're, you're being fair. You're being. Fair. But I'm just saying. I'm saying like that's what, like like Aaron Rod like no one's pointing out Aaron Rodgers is missing throws, but I'm sure he's missing them somewhere. Like that that's my point. Like it's the only reason they're pointing it out because they don't want to say it's just three receiver. No, but the interceptions is different. Oh no, he threw that interception was horrible Sunday. That's another thing I didn't mention. And he missed he missed Dobson for it. It wasn't Dobson at all. He missed him it, wide it, open. It's, it is it is just but, chemistry. Like people, add, this is still like say whatever you want. This is still Tom Brady. He's a bad <laughs> man. Right. He is a bad man. I will say I will now go override everything I just said and say that I, regardless of the quarterbacks they've played, their the defense is being much improved. I noticed that by the receivers they're playing. I mean, nothing with the Jets, but Stevie Johnson and especially Vincent Jackson have been covered well. Akeem Tlaib is playing really well right now. He's definitely deserving of that trade you guys made for him. And the defense, I won't lie, is playing pretty good. Uh, Chandler Jones is playing well. And uh, the, the whole – Rob Ninkovich is still, you know, being a stud, even though with Miami he kind of sucked. But – the whole defense is playing well. I will admit that. And you guys got a tough challenge this week, and I'm excited to see it. Now, um, now, uh, now that we finished talking about our teams, we've oh, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, what? Hold on. The Virginia Tech Hokies. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Let, <laughs> let me, let me, let me get to this point first. First off, since for the NFL portion, going over our teams also kind of did the same task of going over the big games from last week. I want to say on my record that I will never pick the Buccaneers for the rest of the year as long as Greg <laughs> Schiano is the coach. That team looked like such a disaster in every sense. Oh, that's what I wanted turn. to say. Oh, so Go ahead, go ahead. It doesn't do matter it. how talented that defense is because it is really talented. And it doesn't matter how talented that offense is minus the quarterback because it is really talented. They all just look like they're in total chaos. They look like the, the Philadelphia Eagles of this year. They all just look so disorganized. They all look like they don't care. They all look like they don't want to play for the coach. They all look terrible. And they looked awful in that game. And I'm done. I am not picking them <laughs> for the rest of the year. I'm not going to say for the rest of my life. Because this is a coaching issue. But I am not picking them for the rest of the year while Shiano is the coach. And I'm Greg Shiano's already on our NFL hot seat. He's at the top of my list. Especially because Ron, especially because Ron Rivera and Ron Chinzinski uh, got wins this week. But yeah, fuck the Bucks. They every every single one of their losses is just like an epic disaster. Either they get killed or they lose games they absolutely should not have lost. Like that's just the sign of a completely disorganized franchise. Fuck the Bucks. And, and the one thing I was going to add that I just remembered, um, and this is not anything against him. I think it's just it's, it. I think it's a coaching issue as well. Um, Revis was like, like I'm not saying he didn't shut people down at at at, at different areas and different parts of the game, but to me, Revis was Revis for being Revis was a non-factor in that game. Well, he's he's playing coverage. He's not playing man. And, and, right. And, and also, they they didn't attack him. Like he didn't need a chance to do much. He just kind of stood there. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like Revis is always a part of the game. Like you know, like, that's what I'm saying. Like it was he was just he wasn't like he never made a, like he wasn't there to make a play. I ne- it seemed like I hardly ever saw that, him anybody. That tells you that Chiano is not coaching very well. I thought honestly, I started Edelman in fantasy, and I thought he, I, he was gonna get zero points because I just thought they'd stick Revis on him and make Brady throw to his rookies. Didn't happen. But, but but instead you saw like linebackers running in front of him and safeties coming up, man. <laughs> like what the fuck is going on? <laughs> if the, if the, I fully believe that if Rex Ryan was coaching that Buccaneers team last week, they probably could have won that game. Uh, I, I agree. well, I mean, if Revis is playing man, it's it's a totally if, different. If, if with Rex, Rex puts Revis right on Edelman, and Rex has the rest of the defense based around what Revis is doing. Or even if he puts Revis on on Kimbrel, I mean, either either one, like it's. it's Take one out of the game because he straight up admitted on camera that's what he used to do. Like I just tell I just tell Revis to cover the best guy, and then we do everything else. <laughs> that's why when he got hurt, their defense was a little more disorganized. Even though it still ended up being really good, but that's why right, yeah. great defensive corner. I just want to say that for the my I'll talk very quickly about the Miami Hurricanes. We absolutely murdered Savannah State. We won by seventy points. The spread was sixty points, and we actually covered it. Um, which is pretty incredible. There's not much to say. It, it was a meaningless game. <laughs> um, I don't Phil, did, oh, South Carolina was on Yeah, line, they, right? they, 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 they didn't play. They didn't right, play. Um, I wanted, all right, two rants coming. 
one short, one might be a little lengthy, not too lengthy. Go for um, it. Okay, the Hokies. Um, I'm not going to put everything on Logan Thomas. On the, I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to do it. But about 80% is about to go on Logan Thomas right now. Okay, just 80%. 20% goes to Frank Beamer, but 80% Logan Thomas. Um, there was no excuse for Marshall at Lane Stadium, which is one of the toughest places to play in the entire nation. I'm going to send you a link, kid, and you put it in the description. Okay. Like, from a couple years ago, the one game that I went to, last, the last Virginia Tech game I went to when we played y'all in 2011, and we were winning the game, and Inner Sandman came on, and the entire stadium was singing it. It was one of the coolest shits, coolest things I ever been involved with. You were you there? I mean? Yeah, I was there. Oh, because I saw that video you posted it before. That is insane. That, that, that's, that. That, that's, that's the last time I've been to Lane Stadium. I'm kind of kicking myself. But uh, where'd you see the Alabama game? Was that in Alabama? No, that was that was in Atlanta. Oh, it was a neutral. Okay. But but uh, man, there is no excuse, dog. Like that was a horrible display of foot. Like that game was horrible football. Like bad tackling, bad catching. Obviously, Logan Thomas is terrible. Um, turnovers. Uh, just the entire the bad play calls. Just stupid, bad special team. That was an awful game with the highest score I've ever seen in my life. That was a, that was a terrible game. And for for us to play this awful, for the crowd to still be in it the entire time, that shows you how great of a fan base we actually have. Frank Beamer did a lot of dumb shit at the end of that game. That could, why was Logan Thomas throwing the ball so much at the end we had the lead? You know he sucks. You know he sucks. And he threw a late pick, which gave them... The position that fucking look, man. We almost let's play like this. We almost choked. Took us three overtimes to beat a team that probably won't win more than about four, three, three, four games this year. Moving on, they they, they look they look awful. Like the entire the defense looked awful. Everyone looked awful. Logan Thomas being at the top of the list. But as I said, short rent. You know, whatever. I'm not gonna spend too much time on them because they don't even deserve it this week. That's how upset I was with that game, but. I ain't even tweet. Y'all know notice most of the time I live tweet during Virginia Tech game. I didn't even do that. I just watched. I was like, fuck it. I whatever. This is bullshit. But last week was a joke. Fucking joke. Yo, uh, you haven't sent me the link yet, but yeah. I, 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 I'm saying I'll send you the link. Alright, alright, uh, alright. Uh, I'm, I'm, it's on my Twitter page, but man, last week was a Saturday was a joke. How many teams had 70 points, kid? I mean, look it up. You the stat guy. All right, all right, all right. That's my job. Um, Okay, currently 70 points. For sure confirmed, we have, I'm counting right now, Louisville, one. Ohio State, two. UM, three. Uh, 70. Baylor, four. Uh, They're they're the only ones that I would excuse from this conversation. But there's a shitload that had 60-something. Yeah, it's ridiculous. All right, it's uh, ri- UCLA had fifty nine. Wyoming had fifty six. Mississippi State had sixty three. Um, Old Dominion had sixty, which is incredible. Uh, Virginia had fifty. Nebraska had sixty. Uh, Wisconsin had forty one. Pittsburgh had fifty eight. Iowa had fifty nine. Uh, Washington had fifty six. Syracuse had fifty two. Just tons. Yeah. Saturday was a was a shame and a disgrace. This this this, this right here, all of y'all that hate the BCS, which I I do too. I like let, let me let me clarify something. I never said the BCS was a good system. All these trolls on ass that how can you defend the BCS? I never did. Okay, I defend the college football season. I never defended the BCS because the BCS is very flawed. I think that. 32 team playoff that y'all niggas seem to want is very flawed too <laughs> but you know it's just football the same basketball but whatever like i think that's flawed too but it, it is what it is it's not the point of this rant there should be a rule now okay y- y- y'all 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 bear with me there should be a rule to where when you have these teams like ohio state man i'm ta- mainly talking to the sec schools okay but this is to everyone, all the main conferences, all the power programs. When you schedule bums 
let, let's be real. No disrespect to these kids. Y'all living y'all dream, playing college football. But y'all niggas know y'all ain't as talented as some of these other schools I had. It is what it is. But when you schedule bums after week three, the athletic director and the dean should be forced to play in the game. <laughs> seriously. Ser- seriously. No excuse for this bullshit. None. Like, that, that, like honestly, that was the worst football I've ever seen in one weekend. Like, and the NFL had a lot of sloppy games, too. Like, it was a sloppy weekend. That, that, we didn't bring that up. It, it was a sloppy weekend for football in general. It's just with the college game, it was so many blowouts. It made it uh, almost unwatchable. Y'all know, y'all know me. I, I'm a, you know, I love college football. I can sit on the couch every Saturday and watch every single game. Y'all, y'all know I do it. You know what I mean? Look at my Twitter feed every Saturday. You know what I'm saying? I didn't even do that. I didn't even do that this Saturday. I couldn't do it. Pathetic. Like, this shit, that's why I'm glad they're getting rid of the BCS because maybe this shit would get toned down a bit. Remember last year when Florida was playing all them bums when it was doing their, co- their conference schedule? That's playing like no one. Yeah. This shit has got to stop. Week one, week two, I get it. That's cool. You know, I, I understand. But when it's like now, week four, no excuse. And see, I, and Mark, I think that that's what hurts college football to people, you know, like in the NFL. It's like you don't see 70-point outings in the NFL. It's like in, in college you're going to get these, like there's literally games that are pointless to even start watching because there's no chance that the other team can win. And it's like I think – I agree with you. I think it's like one, there should be like a points cap, or two, that they should have to schedule like actual teams. Like, and, and, and Urban Meyer, I love him to death. But he went for it on fourth down when y'all was beating them niggas by 65 points. Really? Wow. Really, dog? Really? You should be ashamed. Ashamed of yours. You know, his excuse was when they asked him about it, he was like, well, we had our second team in and we wanted them to get as many reps as possible. Oh, wow. Really? Really, my dude? Really? Really? That, that's why they had this thing all week. You know what it's called? Practice. That's what <laughs> practice. That's what it's called. Like, oh. like dog, it it, 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 it it literally made me sick. Like, Saturday made me sick. I'm glad you I was said upset. Because that's, that's, that's my biggest problem with college football. Like, like I was upset. Like, like it, it's fine. We, week one and week two. Maybe even week, week three. One, even, yeah. Fine. One, week fine. Three. But, like, no, it's week four. Like, come on. Yeah. Like like every, every game like no there was no there was no matchup at all there was no marquee matchup Notre, this entire Notre, weekend Notre Dame and Michigan State no 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 that was not that that was a battle of two teams that are underachieving and not playing very well <laughs> fair enough and there's another team that's underachieving that we probably won't even talk about this week but yeah come on let's move on because I that that pissed me off. To be, fair, to, talk about it. to be fair to Miami, they had their bye week last week, so they really didn't have many chances to schedule a different a game like this. And, 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 and that's also true. But if you play, if if you play two games, your third game need to not be a ham and egg. That's my point. Okay. If you play, if you play like you know, I mean, well, I'd say like, yeah, yeah, your third game needs to not like at least Miami in between there play Florida. You know what I'm saying? Like these, like you got. Motherfuckers like Ohio State, they've literally not been challenged yet at all. Not even, like, kind of, like, annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> Braxton Miller ain't even playing, and they still blowing because they playing nobody. No one. Maybe they anticipated this injury by Braxton, by Braxton Miller. Huh? I don't, I don't know, but that shit is ridiculous. Anyways, we'll move on. Uh, pretty much covers the whole weekend, but we'll, we'll throw in a few comments to a few more games in the college football world. No, Marquee. no, no, no that, that's the whole weekend. I'm okay. talking about these other games. Can you at least talk about two ga- one game and one team for me? Utah State got a lot of hype for Chucky Keaton. If you saw any of it. Well, between... Got a lot of hype from you. But... <laughs> no, no, no. I, all I, I haven't seen him play. All I said was everyone saying, like, you know, nice things about him. What did you think if you saw any of it? He's he's good. That's you know not much else to say. He played against a good defense and wasn't terrible. So, and what about Notre Dame and Michigan State? Andrew Maxwell is Logan Thomas bad. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> that, nigga, say, that nigga, that nigga is terrible. Did y'all see him in the last three drives? That was like some little league pee wee football. <laughs> what the fuck was he doing? <laughs> like screen passes in the dirt, holding the ball for too long. 
fumbling the ball, recovering, then fumbling again. Yes, that happened. <laughs> uh, he was he was awful. He was. Uh, I mean, he ended up falling back on it. Like literally, it was a bad snap, which wasn't his fault, and he fumbled. Like he caught it and fumbled. I mean, it happens. Then he picked the ball up and fumbled again and fell on top of it. It was the funniest shit I ever seen in my life. But no, he's he's bad. He he's he's awful. Like any anything, it's gonna be hard for me to ever pick that team this season because of how bad he is. Like it's like Virginia Tech, Logan Thomas. Man, we talented, but he's so bad. All right. Next, NFL wise, we covered pretty much everything, but very quickly. We talked about it before the air, but I think it should be touched upon on air. Um, just one team. Uh, two two things I want you to talk about, Marquis, because we talked about it above air. And Phil, you could chime in too if you have any comments. Uh, Carson Palmer and the Cardinals. Well, what were, do you have any concerns? I don't know. I, th- I think Arson. I think Arson. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I, I think Carson Palmer's arm is done, man. Like, it, like y'all know that's his strength. Like, that's why he got drafted so high and people was like, this dude could be amazing and all that stuff because he had a killer arm, like an amazing, phenomenal arm. And I don't see it anymore. I don't see it at all. Like, like his balls don't have zip like they used to. Yeah, I mean, like, he was never like, yeah, he was, you know, he was a smart guy. You know what I mean? He may, but he was never that cerebral. You know, no one was, was, was mistaking him for Peyton Manning or anything like that. It was his, it was his arm was so gifted. That's what made him stand out, and now he don't even have that. I, I'm concerned. I'm very worried about him. And finally, we both we all can comment on this. Oh, he's, oh Phil, 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 you got something? I was to say he's the only USC uh, quarterback in, in like a long time to pan out. Well, yeah. well, to, to be fair, it was. See, this is the thing. I, I think I think those guys get a lot of bad mojo too because people don't know Carson Palmer was when he came out. Like when he got when uh he got recruited by um Pete Carroll, he was one of the top quarterbacks college football. I mean high school football's ever seen. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, yeah, like you know Mac Brown wanted him. Uh, who else wanted him? I I know Mac Brown for sure wanted him, and he decided to go to USC. Yeah, you know I mean and and he 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 had talent. You know what I'm saying? It was like Liner did too. But I think the thing with Liner, people, people kind of lumped him in, was USC quarterbacks. No, he didn't give a fuck about football. And, I mean, and Mark Sanchez should have stayed another year in college. He would have did that. I think his career would be a lot different now. Yep. But, you know, that, that's his own fault. I, I think that – and before them, there was hardly any USC, USC quarterbacks worth talking about at all, like it, at the NFL level. So. And the, the jury's out on Matt Barkley. Well – I, he'll we'll never know because I don't think he'll ever start anywhere. No, no, but oh, you didn't hear Adam Schefter's prediction? He what pre- his big NFL season prediction at the start of the season was that Matt Barkley would start for the Eagles by the end of the year because Vic would get Vic would get injured, of course, and then eventually they'd just give Barkley the chance over Nick Foles. I, I don't think so. Vic gets injured, Foles is the QB the rest of the year. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, th- I think so. All right. Um, anyways, also, the Colts and the 49ers game, kind of the biggest surprise of the weekend. You, you know, this was the biggest win, the biggest the biggest upset, statistically, by a team in the NFL in the regular season in a long time. Because the Colts were 13-point underdogs. And they not only covered, they not only won, they not only beat them by the spread that they were put against, they murdered them in San Francisco. No one saw this game happen like this. So. I'll, I'll let y'all go first. <sighs> of course, Marquis predicted this correctly. Um, no, it's not just that. It's my boy. My boy. Um, I really think it says more about the 49ers injuries. Um, Ian Williams bitch, is out for the bitch, year. Bitch. <laughs> the 49ers have no one to throw to. And when Vernon Davis was out, that really left Kaepernick with very few options. Um... So we talked about it earlier, his struggles and all, and he played terrible. And But to be fair, for a quarterback that young, no matter how good he's playing, for a quarterback that young, you need reliable receivers around you. and Because he just doesn't have that, many game, that much game experience. I don't care if he almost won a Super Bowl. He needs to have reliable receivers around him to further his development, and that's why he struggled. And I don't think it's a big deal, but he just needs his team to get healthy. Phil? Um. 
first of all, from our team, props to Andrew Luck um, for pulling this out. Um, and not just pulling it out, but dominatingly pulling pulling it out. Um, he had a great game. Um, I did not expect this. Um, it, it does make me scratch my head big time uh, uh, with the Niners. And I agree with what, with, uh, what Big Rat said about the receivers. He does need somebody outside of Anquan Bolt. Um, he does have a good running game in Frank Gore, but he still needs a he needs he needs targets. Um, Anqu- Anquan Bolden is the best number two receiver in the history of football. <laughs> like, I mean, he just he's a number two. People act like he's number one, but he's not. Right, but he's having to play his number one is one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is that's the problem. So, um, you know, and no Vernon Davis. That's that's a huge blow, um, right now. So, I mean, I think the Niners will will get better. Um, but as far as this game, I mean, the Colts were the better team. Um, you know what. I don't. I'm not gonna say go as far as saying that was is this game says more about the Niners than it does the Colts. Um, I think the. I mean, that offensive line held. I mean, the, the Niners aren't a pushover on defense. I know they didn't have out, out on, um or out on whatever. No, nah, he was playing. Alden Smith was out there. No, no, Alden Smith didn't play. Did he? Oh, he, he played. Played. Yeah, yeah, that's why everyone was mad. He played. That's right. So um, but yeah, I mean Andrew. I mean, there's Andrew Luck played a great game. Didn't throw any touchdowns, but you know who needed that when Trent Richardson can score on his first carry. <laughs> and, a mob, <laughs> and, a mob, and a mob Bradshaw can just like, rip through that Niners defense. Didn't have that great of a game outside of the touchdown, but um, yeah, the, the Colts. We'll see. You know they still got uh, my boy Reggie Wayne, so we'll see. Uh, ah. go, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I bet y'all think I'm a Colts fan. I'm really that. My sister is, and uh, right after this game was over. She calls me and she was like, she was like, I love him. I love. I see what you've been saying now. I love him. <laughs> like she sounded like she was about to cry. She was like, he's so amazing. He's so amazing. Is, is he thirty? He plays like he's thirty. <laughs> 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 this is his second. Are you sure this is his second year? But yeah, man, it's like I told y'all. He. I, I, I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be honest. He didn't. He didn't light everyone up like some people are acting like he didn't. He had a very honestly had a very pedestrian game, but he looked like a veteran out there. Y'all cannot tell me that did not look like uh, uh, somebody that has won a Super Bowl out there operating the offense. Y'all, did, like, he looked so just wise beyond his years, man. He really did out there, and that's not even me. That's not even me on his nuts. That's just being honest. Like he did. It, like didn't he? Didn't he, kid? Didn't he? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, I, yes, I, yes, I, yes, 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 yes. You were. Like, like he is. He. I'm telling y'all, man. Like when I say it. Four years from now, man, y'all going to be like, you know what? Marquim was right the whole time. Peyton Manning, they did the right thing. He was right the whole time. And everyone that, cut, that said, oh, you're giving him way too much hype, y'all all going to be like, oh, man, oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, but, but, but I'll be honest. I'll be honest. The running game was the key, like that whole game. Because uh, Andrew Luck, it's, it's not that he couldn't move the ball because he was. It's he didn't need to. I like this new philosophy. So I think I think they needed a second running back. I mean, let's be real, they didn't really have one. No. So it, it was hard for them to, you know, run the ball. That's why Luck you saw Luck throwing the ball forty some odd times in the first two games. Now he has now he has you know what I mean, they wanted a two running back type system. And I think this is what you're gonna get for like the rest of the season. And both of them stay healthy, they can beat anyone. I'm saying it right now. Put it on my fucking record. They they are winning this division. Oh, like, like, Whoa. yeah, yeah, Damn. they are winning. They are winning this division. Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. If I'll say they look more impressive than the Texans. I'll give they, that. They, they have from the beginning of the season onward. The Texans have beat people, but they've looked better. They've looked better this entire season so far. I agree. They have. Like, like match kid, your boy Matt Schaub has been Matt nothing. Yeah. He's been he's he's been laundry Matt. Wow. He's been no, welcome. No, 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 no. That he's first been, that first week was one of the best games he played of his career. Look, he's been he's been welcome Matt. Laundry Matt. Laundry Matt. Uh, uh, Matt Matthew Broderick. <laughs> Matt Damon. He ain't been he ain't been nothing but uh, anything other than a quarterback these last two weeks. He's been terrible. Terrible these last two weeks. Leave me alone, damn it. And I'm, t- I'm telling you, I love Aaron Rodgers, y'all, but y'all know I want Andrew Luck to win a ring. If the Eagles don't win one, which we ain't, I want him to win a ring. Wait, wait till playoff time. Y'all going to think I'm a coach, man. I'll tell you that. 
<laughs> go ahead. Say the Colts are going to go to the Super Bowl. Say, say uh, Andrew uh, Luck. Say Andrew uh, Luck is going to top Peyton Manning in Denver uh, as a passing uh, the torch. Uh, I, don't, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. But I, you know what though? You know what? Not this season. That would be awful. But like, yeah, not this season. But like, I can see that happening like a couple years down the road. Like when Peyton's like towards the end, and like he's on like his last run, and like they play. Peyton's done after this year. Well, I don't know about that. No, I don't know. They Quiet win. You. Quiet you, but well, yeah, if they win, maybe. I don't continue, know. I, continue, Marquis. I, I, I think Peyton plays out the rest of his contract. But I think, um, how many years left? Four, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think he plays. Yeah, out. yeah I, I, th- I think he'll just play it out. But what was it? Yeah, yeah, I can see something like that happening like a couple years from now. Like Peyton's on like his last run with the Broncos. Luck comes in there and, and beats him, and then, like, they shake in. You know what I mean? It's like one of those moments where, like, you know, they shake hands, and, you know, it's like the passing of the torch type deal. Y'all know I would cry. I'd just cry if y'all saw some shit like that. Or if it was, like, Tom Brady or something, and then, and then they did it. Oh, man, I'd cry like a bitch. He does wear number 12. See? see, i I cry like such a bitch. All right. We get the Colts will win the division. See, that, that's an actual, like, see, it's not just, like, stupid shit, like, you know, like, I will never pick the Lions for the rest of my life. And, and I won't. And, I, and, yo, haven't I been right, though, the way they've been playing? Good God. Yeah, no, that's true. That's true. Terrible. You Now, I'm just saying, but, like, this is an actual prediction, bold statement. And it's impressive. Um, all right. Next, uh, now we'll go preview the week. And a lot of big games this week in the NFL and in the college football world. We'll start with the college football world. And... I want to introduce a new concept that we came up with called Hero Picks. Basically, Hero Picks is going to be when one of us picks a team to win a game that the rest of us don't think is going to win. And it's an upset. has no chance to win. That has no chance to win. It's an upset. It's an upset. And we're right. That is going to be a Hero Pick. It doesn't count if it's a pickup. For example, this week in like – let me find a good example. Uh, uh, Seahawks, Texans. If – we go out if one person goes out on a limb and picks the Texans. That's not going out on a limb. They're at home. They actually might be favorited, and it's a pick'em. It has to be a game where only you pick it, and it's going out on a limb. And if you are right, and we all approve it as a hero pick, you get a point. But and we're, you you don't get a point obviously if you're if you're wrong. But yeah, we hero pick points is what we're gonna call it. Our hero picks for the week. We'll start in the world of college football. Um, I don't know if there's many hero picks here, but we start off with South Carolina and UCF. Markeem, college football guru, does UCF have a chance? Yeah, they got a chance, man. Have y'all seen South Carolina this entire season? Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, this vaunted defense has been, like, you know, very inconsistent. Sometimes they look exactly how I thought they would. Other times they look like, you know, uh, like, you know what I'm saying, like just average. And UCF been putting up points, man. I'm just saying, I, I, I'm I'm not gonna go as far as to pick them, it's but at, uh, it's also at UCF. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if y'all don't know, Florida college football fans are the best on the planet. But uh, like I can admit that, kid, I give y'all that. Y'all niggas go crazy for y'all teams. But um, I ain't gonna go as far as to pick them. But if they win, do not be surprised. Like, it's gonna be extremely close. Like, South Carolina will escape with this win. It won't be, like, convincing. They'll escape with this win. Purely because I have no other... Purely because I want to make a hero pick statement of the week. And I they're really I really do not have another one. And I really like the way UCF is playing. And this is all falling under my master plan that I talked about weeks ago. Because you, you want Louisville in the national title. No. That's what you want. <laughs> I want Bridgewater to win the Heisman. But, yes... Partly for Louisville's national title game hopes. My plan, because Louisville plays no one. And my plan was, man, if UCF wins out their schedule, beats Penn State, and then beats South Carolina, UCF will be ranked. And ranked pretty decently, too. They'd probably be, like, in the top 20. And if, then yep. Lu- if Louisville, plays UCF, Louisville plays UCF, I think, next week or the week after? Week after. If, yeah. The week after. And if Louisville were to shred them... Then hey, Louisville beat a ranked team, and <laughs> it, it could count towards Bridgewater's Heisman hopes and their national titles. This is all part of my master plan. 
So I'm going to stick with my master plan, go out on a, on a live, be the hero. I think we can all agree this is a hero pick. Oh, yeah. Hero pick? You're just hoping they win. You know? No, I'm picking them to win. No, you're just I'm, picking them to win. I'm, yeah, but, them, I'm giving my official pick, gut feeling that my plan will come together. I don't know why, but I've had this plan. I've been thinking about it for several weeks. This has been the scenario that I've drawn up in my head. I have a gut feeling that my scenario comes true. I'm going on a limb. Hero pick. UCF for the win. So my plan comes true. Oh, I don't know if I agree that it's a hero pick. Well, that's whatever. Stop. You 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 ruin everything. No, the reason why <laughs> we talked about this before the show, like you really have no reasoning at all. I have a gut. No, in all honesty, I have a gut. Well, feeling. I mean, I mean, you know, he's going with his gut. I have a gut feeling that my plan comes together. Like, like he's not just saying some bullshit like y'all be doing sometimes. I got it. All right, so at least he's, he think he actually thinks. Yeah. You, your turn. Yeah, this is your team, Phil. They haven't looked good. What do you they think? Haven't. And Marquim, every I agree with everything Marquim has said, and I agree with everything that, as far as the outcome, is what he said. I think Carolina squeezes squeezes this one out. Um, they cannot oh, lose this game. Now. I would like, love. It's, I would it's love. ridiculous. What do you say now? I said they cannot lose this game. It just oh, they can't. Ridiculous. No, they, if they lose it, oh my goodness, God, the face. I'll have to stay off Facebook for like a month. <laughs> but anyways, um, and stick. Oh, and if they lose, I don't want to hear SEC. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I, it's. I mean, I don't know. If trap games the right way because I'm UCF's talented, but <sighs> I'm worried about this game, man. I'm just worried. That's all I can really say. Let's pull it off. Let's hopefully that Vanderbilt crap in the second half is going to help us play a whole lot better this week. And that's all. I, that's all I can hope for. But I got Carolina obviously winning this game. But they got to start strong because if they fuck up late, they better have a lead. Yeah, as I said, we started strong last week, Marquis, <laughs> or the week uh, before uh, against Vandy. So it's like I don't know, but I think it's good. I don't think I. Don't, I would love Carolina win convincingly, but I just don't see it happening. I see it, them squeezing this one out. All right. This is me being real. I would love to. Like I said, would love. Other. Uh, now, if, every, if everything comes together, though, they'll kill them. Right. But I don't think it's going to happen like right. that. Next, we got the next game. Marquise, your boys, Virginia Tech and Georgia Tech. What are your thoughts on this one? I got Georgia Tech, and it's not just because of Logan Thomas. I know it's what y'all think. <laughs> but uh, I think that they'll be able to run on us, and uh, they'll have the ball a lot. And that means Logan Thomas. Well, I guess it is because of Logan Thomas. Logan <laughs> Logan Thomas will have to pass to win this game. And uh-uh, no, not in this universe. So on my birthday, you know what I mean? You know, oh, today's Wednesday. So it means the day after my birthday, I got to watch them get killed. So Happy they go, hey, 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 get killed. birthday hey, to uh, you. Uh, they're, they're not going to get killed. Happy but I think, uh, birthday. Get, 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 I'll hang up. I'll hang up right now. But, uh. Like, yeah, I, I mean, Logan, Te- y'all know what he can do. Well, what he can't do. Let what me put he can't that do. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, he, he's going to have the pass. He's going to make plays with his arm. And that's impossible. So, yeah. Phil. Um, first of all, I want to ask Marquise, Mar- Mar- because uh, I was just looking at their schedule. Um, but, uh, I'm going to pick Georgia Tech because I'm not picking Logan Thomas. Um, but uh, does Georgia Tech have a legit – Chance at the ACC this year, or you don't think? No, uh, no. Okay. I thought, <laughs> hey, well, like, who, who do they? Don't they have? The, don't they have? You know, play, next they, play, they play us. They play us next week. Yeah, next that's, week they play Miami. Cool. They got Clemson. They got Georgia at the end of the year. So, okay. no, God, no. <laughs> Just asking, but I got Georgia Tech to beat the Virginia Tech. Um. All right, I'm gonna pick Georgia Tech as well. This is usually. Where I go the opposite just to piss everybody off, but it's also why my record sucks compared to everybody else. Although it is the reason we're all tied because last week I picked Notre Dame when y'all picked uh, Michigan State. But I'm going to pick Georgia Tech just to be safe. Uh, LSU and Georgia. Woo, game. Let's big, go LSU. Big, big game of the weekend. Yeah. Um, y'all want me to go first? Yeah, I'll, yeah, yeah. I'll go ahead because I ain't got much. All right, all right, go, go ahead, Come on, LSU. Pull this off. I'm going all in LSU. Let's go LSU. Uh, I got Georgia. Um, I just think they're the better team. because I need Georgia to lose, obviously. I got Georgia because I just think they're the better team. But, okay, go. go. Here's the thing. If they can play ball control. Zach Mittenberger don't have to throw that much, even though he's played a lot better so far this year. 
But uh, this would be the best defense he plays. He faced. Period. Like it's not even like a conversation. This is the best defense he'll he'll, he'll face so far. If they can run the ball and just hold on to it, they they should win. Because I think so far they've looked better than Georgia. Even with Georgia beating South Carolina, they've looked they've looked pretty good, pretty damn good. And um, I'm gonna go I'm I'm gonna go with my head in this and say Georgia, but. You know, LSU wins this game. It wouldn't shock me. I just think I think it's the key is the key is running the ball though, and if they can if they can run if they can get in a rhythm early to where Mettenberger doesn't have to drop back and pass every play, they'll be fine. Like they they'll win. But I don't think that's gonna happen. Jeez, LSU has a schedule and a half, son. Yeah, yeah. I know. It, just for people that want to know, Georgia. I mean, LSU plays Georgia this weekend, then at or at Georgia this weekend. At Mississippi State, and then uh, home against Florida, home, uh, at Ole Miss, then they play Furman, which is going to be a blowout. Uh, then they play at, at number one Alabama, and then at home against Texas A&M, and end at Arkansas. Wow. Yeah. If they went out, they're clearly the number one. That, that's not going to happen. No, they're not going to beat Alabama and Texas A&M back to back. How come some SEC teams have brutal schedules and some SEC teams have laughable schedules? It, 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 it depends on, like, the year. Like, sometimes uh, – because like, the SEC is the toughest conference, and sometimes there's just teams that end up playing all of the toughest teams, and the con- <laughs> it just happens like that sometimes. Like Alabama plays LSU, and they play no one else. Yeah, man. Because Georgia, what you call it? Georgia's schedule is pretty tough too. If you look top to bottom, they had to play Clemson, South Carolina, LSU, Florida, and then they got to go at Tennessee and at Georgia Tech, and you know that's just not. It's not tough. easy. Yeah. Um, and so, it is the best conference in the country, people. People think I shit on them. It is the best conference in the country. Some of y'all niggas just go overboard. Like Emmy Night. All right, go ahead. <laughs> anyways. Ow, 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 ow. Uh, anyways. Um, uh, yeah, Aaron, last time Aaron Murray played in that stadium in Georgia, whatever it's called. What's the stadium called? Oh. Um, Marquim, if you know, I mean, it's like, ah. They don't play in the Jordan mode. It's it's called uh what the fuck is it called? Jesus, I should know this. Well, whenever they play in their stadium, uh, they look he looked incredible. So I'm gonna rely that he's gonna play All at right. that level. I, I missed everything you just said. What happened? What's the name of Georgia Stadium? Uh, I don't know, but it's in Athens. I've yeah. never been to it. Well, he played great last time they were there. They're at home Stanford again. Stanford Stadium. Oh, oh, okay, Phil. Well, anyways, <laughs> he played great the last time they were there. So I'm gonna go with my gut, and I just think they're the better team. I'm picking Georgia. Um, All right. Next we got uh, Oklahoma versus Notre Dame. Ooh, um, this is tough for me because I have not been impressed with either team all yet. <laughs> so uh, I, I don't know, man. So much unknown about Oklahoma. You don't know what you're gonna get. You know, is Blake Bell going to play most of the game? They play about three quarterbacks a game, seem like. Um, to me, Blake Bell has looked the best, though. I don't get why I just go with him, but I don't know. But um, Tommy Reese, I-, I think they throw the ball too much. I think, that, and that's the one thing that Bob Stoops is a wizard against. That's the pass rush, and, you know, he- he'll break you down if that's all you do. You know what I mean? So I- I- I'm going to go with Oklahoma, but, you know, I – like I said, man, it's just so, so much unknown about this game, and the Big Twelve is so. I mean, I know this. I know Notre Dame's independent, but that conference is so hard to predict because I don't even know. Like, I could be totally wrong, and Oklahoma could get killed, and it would not surprise me. Like, this game could go either one of three ways: Notre Dame loses a close game, Oklahoma gets killed, or we have the best game of the season. <laughs> so I don't know. I would go to Oklahoma, though, man. I don't know. It's in Notre Dame, right? Yeah. Phil? You guys should know. I'm picking Oklahoma. All right, then. <laughs> you know what? I uh, I went with my gut last week and picked Notre Dame for no reason. This is not a hero pick, but I, it worked last week. I'm going to stick with it again and just pick Notre Dame again. Because like, like, like I, I don't think there's any way – they go in here and get killed, though. Like, Oklahoma gets killed. But, uh, I mean, well, not Oklahoma, uh, Notre Dame. But I think it's highly possible that Oklahoma just gets smashed. 
<laughs> I've actually seen a lot of Notre Dame this year. I saw a lot of the Michigan game. I saw a good, por- a decent portion of their, their fucking, uh, the other game they played. The first game of the season, I think, where Tommy Reese did really well. And I saw them play a little bit against Michigan State. So, like I, in term, in terms of talent, they're in my opinion, they're more talented than that team last year. It's just Tommy Reese to me is not a very good quarterback. That's just me. And they have a tougher schedule, don't they? Yeah, this year, yeah, definitely. So, ah, but they played nobody last year. Oh, God, don't start this bullshit. Anyways, uh, next we move on to Ole Miss and Alabama. There is no chance in hell Ole Miss wins this game, but, you know, this will be a test, though. I don't, anybody that thinks Alabama is going to run over them, y'all are ridiculous. Y'all haven't seen, never seen Robert Kendici play. I'm just, I'm just saying, it's not going to happen. But, <laughs> but um, I, you know, I got Bama, obviously. Yeah, you know I mean, and, and they'll win, and it won't be. It'll be. It'll be tough, but it won't necessarily be like a nail biter. They'll win though. Uh, Phil, did, did I ever put on my record that no one will be Alabama this year? I think you did. Anyways, I'm picking Alabama. And, uh, and this and this will be the game where T.J. Yeldon goes nuts and people like the kid. Like, well, he hasn't played well this year, even though he's only played twice. And one of those games, he had 150 yards. But you know, whatever. And fumbled the <laughs> fucking game away almost. What, what, what happened, nigga? <laughs> uh, I'm going to go out on a limb and pick Ole Miss. I <laughs> I'm Are you serious right now? No, no, no. no. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I was about to say. I'm going to pick Bama. But I do think my bold prediction would be AJ McCarron throws an interception this game. I'll say that. Well, you, well yeah, I think so too. I think he, dro- I think he throws a couple. And <laughs> they still win. <laughs> Robert Kem- A.J. McCarron rarely sees pressure. And if anyone's going to give him some pressure, it would be Robert Kemdichi, number one overall recruit out of high school, who's a big dude. If anyone can rattle him a little bit and get him to make a mistake, it's him. So I'll go on on a limb and, and say he forces A.J. McCarron to throw an interception, if that's even true. But anyways, moving on. Uh, next we got Arizona and Washington, both undefeated. Pac-10 battle. See, though, there, there's only one reason we're picking this game. It's because I can't believe both of these teams are actually undefeated <laughs> right now. Like, like I do watch it to be better, but, yo, they're looking like they're, like, one of the best teams in the conference. I, I, don't, I don't imagine this will last, but, you know, I think they're going to win. I, I think they're going to win. What's that next? Look at this schedule real quick for me. Who? For who? Washington? Washington. Yeah. After, okay, after Arizona, they go at Stanford. Okay, that will be their first loss, but, like, Dog, like, if they played Stanford, like, late in the year, because I knew they had to go there. I just didn't know what week. But uh, if they played them late in the year, I think they'd be undefeated all the way into that game. Well, <laughs> after Stanford, they then at home play Oregon. Yeah, I know. But I knew it was, like, back-to-back. I just thought it was, like, a little bit later. But I thought, um, yeah, but, like, let's say they played both of them, like, the last, like, two weeks of the season. They would be undefeated coming into both of those games. I really believe that. Like this team is this team is really good. They just ain't that good. They got a lot of af- athletes on offense, man. And you know, pe- people was uh, people was wondering, you know, what would happen with uh, with you know with their pass rush because that was that was the biggest issue last year. Like niggas had all day to throw against them, and that is not the case this year. This team is so much. If they were if they were anywhere else but the SEC and the Pac-12, they would have a shot to win any conference in the country. That's how good this team is. I can't believe I just said that. Phil. But they win. Phil. Uh, who, who did Marquine pick? Washington. I got Washington. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. I'm going to pick Washington as well, only because I haven't seen enough of Arizona to go out but, on a limb. But K- Kadeem Carey is a stud, though. He is, he is. I knew that from last year. Uh, then we got Wisconsin and Ohio State. The first tough game Ohio State plays all year. Is it really tough? It's tougher. And it's tougher than what they usually have. They better win. I got them because they just better win. I, we don't know if Braxton Miller going to play. The word is that he is, though. But um, even if he didn't, they better win. Because they're better. <laughs> like, they're better in every way. They're better. Except at running back. But everywhere else, they're better. They better win this game. Simple as that. Phil, do I just write Ohio State and me and use names right now? No, I'm going to go with Wisconsin because of that bull crap they lost by. <laughs> they're going to 
Get a win. They're going to get a win because of that ref bull. <laughs> didn't they, didn't they, didn't they win? Coming out this week. No, they win last week. It was the week before, I think. Well, week before. I mean, but didn't they win like Saturday? Didn't they play Saturday and win? Don't ruin his hero pick moment. Oh, oh okay. I, mean, I was just asking. That's not a hero pick, but... <laughs> this is definitely a hero pick. Okay, fine. That's a hero pick then. Marquee, this is a hero pick, right? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, because they are better in every way. So yeah, yeah. This is a, this is definitely a hero pick. Come on, Wisconsin. All right then. Uh, so that leaves the hero pick watches for the weekend. Uh, Big Rat's got. On his watch, UCF and South Carolina. And Phil has on his watch, Wisconsin and Ohio State. None for Markeem yet. We'll get there. All right. Next we got the NFL. Some good games this week. Uh, We'll go right into the Thursday night game. 49ers-Rams. This is only interesting because it's at St. Louis. The Rams play phenomenally against everybody in that division, as we all know. And the uh, the 49ers are struggling right now, and Alden, Alden Smith is not playing this game. I think Vernon Davis is still out. I could be wrong. Um, obviously, Crabtree and Manning have are gone, and uh, Ian Williams is out as well. Very interesting. Phil, who do you got here? Um, first of all, I got a question because I can't remember. I don't feel like clicking to look for it. Um, was it the Rams and the, and the Niners that tied last year? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was them. And yeah. then they beat them the next year, the next game. Oh wow, St. Yeah, that's right, that's right. St. Louis was four zero and was it? Weren't they five zero and one last year? Yeah, in the division. Yeah, something oh, like yeah. that. Huh? I'll look it up, but yeah, there I, yeah, they, they they had like a winning record against that division. Wow. Like they only lost like one game or some shit like that. That kind of changes my my mind a little bit. That, anyway. That's why this game. You're was it you before? Wow. Game. Yeah, it was because sorry. That, jackass. It makes sense and now. It's, it's in St. Louis and San Francisco playing bad and anytime. Okay, <laughs> just saying. Anyways, um, I think San Fran wins in a close one because of that, and I also think I just think it's gonna be close because San, you know Kaepernick doesn't have an explosive offense right now, um, and their defense is, is you know losing some uh, out on Smith and things like that. So. I'm gonna go with uh, with with San Fran winning the game, but it's gonna be closer than than uh, than people probably expect. Plus, it's Thursday; they just played Sunday, so. Uh, okay, for the record, by the way, uh, St. St. Louis was four one and one. Whoa. Their only loss was at Seattle, but it was the last week of the season, and they only lost by a touchdown. Which only losing by a touchdown at Seattle is pretty impressive. Uh, so Seattle needed that game, I think. What? Didn't they need that game? Yeah, yeah. Marshall Lynch played. He had, he had he, Marshall Lynch had a hundred yards rushing, so he played. So yeah, uh, at and they only lost by a touchdown. So impressive. Uh, but what would you? So you picked the 49ers? Yeah, I picked the 49ers. I'm gonna also pick the 49ers. I just think, like I was talking about earlier, uh, really good teams find ways to win when they're kind of in a bad state. Right now, the 49ers mm-hmm. going through a rough patch. I think John Har- Jim Harbaugh is too good of a coach. To let them lose this game, so I'm gonna pick Niners. Hero pick time! Oh, he's got the Rams. What? No, 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 Alden Smith, like y'all say. Uh, You know the secondary has looked, uh, yeah, like most of the season. Um, Patrick Willis is he back now? Because I know he hurt himself. Is he good now? Uh, I can check, but yeah, he might not be. But you know, I'm just I, hey, they're really hurt. You know, they got enough talent in St. Louis to win this game. I guess St. Louis, man, it's not really that big of a stretch to me. You know, and Colin, unless Colin Kaepernick hikes the ball and just runs every play. <laughs> wow! <laughs> like it's gonna be close. It's gonna be incredibly close. And the Niners moved to one and four, one and three, one and three. And, 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 then, and then they win like five straight games. Watch. All right, all right. Fair enough. I respect your pick. Uh, next game, uh, that's Thursday night. And again, I think we're going to get a shitty Thursday night game. This isn't the NFL's fault because the scheduling, the schedule isn't terrible. It's just that you're catching all these teams at a really inconvenient time. You got the Patriots without their offense. You got the Eagles as they're learning how to play defense. You got the 49ers when they're all banged up. I've seen a lot of people be very critical of the Thursday night games. It's the, it's not the NFL's fault. These games all look good on paper. 
It's just that they're catching these teams at really bad times. They're not uh, worth the Monday night games. Say it again? They're better than the Monday night games. Yeah, on paper they are. Yeah, on paper. Although not, not this week. But yeah, on paper, almost every week, they're better than yeah, the Monday night games. This week is where it picks up. That's right. Cool. Um, okay. Uh, next we got... Uh, what do I have here? Uh, Giants and Chiefs. Interesting because the Giants are 0-3. The Chiefs are 3-0. and The Giants look like they can win at any moment or lose at any moment. Um, very interesting game, I feel. It's in, it's in Arrowhead. Uh, Marquise, you go first this time. And what are your thoughts on the Giants as a whole? The Giants are terrible. Did y'all see how many times they got sacked? Did y'all see how many times Eli got sacked in that game? Oh, my God. Like, like yo, I, I don't ever remember that offensive line being that bad, like, ever. Yeah. Like, since he's been there. Like, even when he was, like, a rookie, he was fumbling all the time. That was terrible. Like, they were, they were like they had six sacks in the first quarter. Y'all know that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard yeah. that. Six in the first half and then one in the second. Oh, yeah, six in the first half, yeah. And one, yeah. Ridic- that's crazy. That's 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 crazy. But um and the Chiefs arguably have a better defense. I don't see why I would pick against the Chiefs. I got the Chiefs. I I, I don't see what reason I would have to pick the Giants. Like what? It it would be solely going out on a limb at this point. They it, are terrible. It honestly would be a hero pick. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for real. What a transition. <laughs> what you mean? Hero pick. Woo! I am going to go out on a limb. The one thing that does scare me is Arrowhead, but I just do not. And this, and I, and I, I'm not going to say I'll be shocked. Kansas City should win this game, but I just think that the Giants are not going to go 0 and 4. I just, I can't see the Giants going 0 and 4. Their offensive line is horrible. I have no like on the field reasons to pick this, except for that I just think the Giants overcome this. They cannot go 0 and 4. I got the Giants and a hero pick over Kansas. City. This would be, and if this happens, this would be solely Eli Manning. I really yeah. believe that. Yeah, like completely Eli Manning. It has to be, or mistakes on Kansas City part. That's and the I, problem, and, though. And, and really, really, Phil. <laughs> like, that's what this is. Yeah, this is the ultimate hero. Pick. This is the biggest hero pick of the week, in my it, opinion. It's bigger than Ohio State. Yeah, Wisconsin. It, it, that's right. It's bigger than UCF and and, and, South, and, Carolina. and South Carolina because the Giants have looked so awful. They have so awful. They have. I think it was, and I appreciate Phil. I appreciate uh, Phil's pick. I think it was uh, Greg Rosenthal on. Uh, if y'all don't know, the Around the League podcast, they do a podcast two days a week, previewing the weekend's game and reviewing the previous week's games. Um, their guys are Greg Rosenthal, Chris Wessling, Dan Hansis, and and uh, and Mark Sessler. I think it was Greg Rosenthal that just said, "Is it really? Sh- is it? Are we really at the point where I can say truthfully?" That aside from the Jaguars, the Giants are the worst team in the NFL. Has anyone looked worse? And everyone was just like, no, no, no you're right, you're right. <laughs> We're at that point. The Giants legitimately right now are getting Jadavian Clowney at the end of the year. Like, okay. <laughs> which is a scary thought. but <laughs> legit- I, And let me say something. I do still think, like, talent-wise, I still think the Browns are worse. But, of course, they look better last the week. The Browns are worse than the Giants? I don't know. Talent wise, they just lost, They just gave away like arguably one of their best players. No, their best. Eh. But 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 he well on offense, but he wasn't doing anything. That's true. But oh, we never talked about that. By hey, the way. Brian Hoyer. I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, Markeem, you should say yeah. this because you have on your record Rod Chudzinski is an awful coach, and you yeah, were, you weren't happy with how they used Trent Richardson. So, what are your thoughts on the trade? Since we have, I, I, I mean, it's not that I wasn't happy with it. It's just what they do. You know, they want to be a passing team, and that's fine, but that's not his strength. Yeah, he can catch out of the backfield, but he's not Reggie Bush. You know what I'm saying? He's not, you know, it, it, it didn't make any sense for how they were using him. The way they used him at Bama was that you give him the ball and you let him run between the tackles. Like, as a lateral runner, he was not what Mark Ingram was. You know I mean, he was a runner between the tackles. It is what it is. So, but are you happy? Are, do you think less of Chudzinski now, now that you know what their plan was? Not that he wasn't just not using return chin because he doesn't know what he is. They were phasing him out. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, like, I mean, I still think he's terrible. Wow. Like, period. I still, like, no, why the fuck do you have someone that's not playing well throw the ball like 40 some odd times? Yeah. That's like if Tim Tebow threw the ball 40 times again. Well, he wouldn't get a chance to because there'd be so many three and outs. But, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that happened. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I guess. 
<laughs> Just since, since we're on topic, eighteen and one. <laughs> what? Back, 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 back home. Back home. How is that on topic? Damn. It's on topic because it's a random Tebow reference for no reason on this podcast. Just like a random 18 and 1 reference. And yes, just like the random comment of that video that you back guys. Back off. Back off. Back off. 18 and 1. All right. Well, <laughs> fair enough. Uh, I mean, I thought the trade was very good for the Colts. And, uh, and, I mean, and yo, it is good for the for the. Um, for the Browns. For the, for the Browns, too, yeah, because they, they got a first-round pick for someone they weren't even using. Yeah. And Brian Hoare is the future. Woo! Former Patriot. <laughs> he, he, he ain't bad, though. He played a lot better than I thought he would. All right, what's your pick for Kansas City Giants? We went off a little bit. Uh, I'm picking the Chiefs. Um, but I would not – it still would not surprise me if the Giants were, were to win the Super Bowl this year. I just – I honestly think – that they just don't care. Still, like uh, someone tweeted that. Someone tweeted, "I've never seen so many happy faces and high fives after a 38-0 destruction." Like, they just don't seem to care. The line looks terrible. Both lines look terrible. And I don't know. I just think they could play better. It's not. I don't think they're deficient in talent. I just think that they just. Are we at the point that because they won two Super Bowls in five years, they're struggling to be motivated? Yeah, I would agree. I, I think they just like are well, done with the season. Were, didn't they win both of them at nine and seven? Yeah. Probably no, seven. no, they, no. They were ten and six for the first one, right? Nine and seven for the second one, right? I think you're right. Yeah. But uh, I mean, they probably think like I mean, what can you help to think? They probably don't. Maybe I don't know. I can't say they lose on. I, mean, I just, I just don't know. Like as an athlete, your goal is to win a Super Bowl, and not. And then once you win it, the goal is to get that taste of it again. And then they've done that. I don't know. Like, I just really, I really think that's part of this. Or they just think, like, you know, I don't think they would do that, though. But I was like, I don't think they would, like, oh, well, let's just start week or something like that. It's not like it's not like they're saying, oh, let's try to lose. It's just that they don't have that extra drive that says, let's really give it our all. Let's, yeah, I think let's it's really like, get, it, like, eh, move on. It's just like, eh, well, let's, let's play. Like, you know, let's, 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 you know, let's try to block him. Oh, he got past me. Eh, whatever. Let, let's go out there and have fun, guys. Yeah. Uh, and that is on the coach. They 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 they're playing like they're still going to go out for pizza afterwards. Right. I mean, when you were in school and like you were a kid and like no, even if you lost, coach still took you out for pizza and ice cream. That's it's, how they're playing. And it's not like it's not like 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 it's not like they're not trying. Like they're trying. They just don't give a shit about the result. It seems. I, I'm I'm. They're still going to get that pizza and ice cream. They don't care. Yeah. So. Well, but I think if they ever want to hit that switch, you know, they could do really well. But uh, I'm picking the Chiefs. I don't, I don't see the Giants winning. And, and, and they'll go bowling every weekend like you did. <laughs> <God dang. laughs> go ahead. Next we got Seahawks versus Texans. Even though the Texans are 2-1, and one, I will admit, Shop has not looked good the past two Thank weeks. Thank you. Thank you, Matt, Matt Garbage. Matt Garbage. Oh, it's Laundry Matt, man. That's his yeah, name. Laundry Matt. He is still a top 10 quarterback Welcome, in Matt. this lead. I stand by that. He is still a top ten quarterback. In Shower team. Matt. Uh, what, what's some think? other? What's some other Matts? Uh, <laughs> go, go ahead. I'm sorry. Eighteen and one. Bad call. <laughs> well, anyways, um, they've looked really bad. I, I won't. He's looked really bad. I, I won't lie. I won't lie. Um, but I think that. I think that this team is just still very talented in every asset of the game. They just have so many talented players in almost every position. And I think so that... So wide receiver. They literally only have one guy. Now, DeAndre Hopkins is DeAndre playing. Hopkins, they got DeAndre. We, we, we don't know yet. So far, he's been all right. Um, we don't know yet. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, but I, I still love the Texans, and I still think because they're so talented, as long as Schaub isn't playing terrible, they can do enough to win games. And the Seattle struggles on the road, obviously. And not only that, they haven't played on the road since week one. I think they're going to be a little rattled at first, and I think the Texans take this one. I wouldn't call it a hero pick. It's at home. And the Seattle consistent struggles on the road, but I'm going to pick the Texans. Uh, Phil? Uh, um, I think this, I mean, I, I kind of agree with a lot of things you said, you know, on the road. 
Uh, Seattle doesn't ever recruit that person, but I'm I'm gonna stick with Seattle. I'm gonna I'm gonna pick Seattle, but I wouldn't be shocked if Texans won this game. I think you know it's just whether I just I'm not too like you know laundry mat's not doing too great. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what he does at home with Seattle. Big form. They need to win this to 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 not be questioned even more. So, but Seattle. Yeah. Well, Seattle had a buy last week, so. Hokey. All right, so is my go? Yeah. I got Seattle. Yeah, but okay. I got I got Seattle. Oh. They're playing against Richard Sherman and the best secondary in the league against someone who is playing awful. Oh I got God. Seattle. <sighs> like, like, and ain't Andre Johnson hurt? Yeah, he's hurt, too. I don't think he's playing. So is Russell, so is Russell O'Kong, and he's the guy that has to guard J.J. Watt. Look. Actually, I could be wrong. Russell, that. Russell Wilson's going to be bad too. I, I, I think that anyway. But uh, I mean, I think. Well, I don't mean to say I think he's bad. I think he's going to struggle anyway. But come on, man! I'd rather have Russell Wilson throwing those passes than Matt, than Matt garbage, than laundry Matt. Welcome Matt, shower Matt. Yeah, let's just completely ignore that week one. He played one of the best games of his career. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And let's ignore the first half when he was awful. Let's ignore that too. You just ignore that, don't you, kid? Sweep that under the rug. Let that have been Tom Brady. You, that's all you would have been talking about. <laughs> He's coaching in a in a completely run. Not, it's not just run first. It's run first, second, and third offense. Like well, he's still awful. That that would make you think he'll throw better. That's what it would make you think. He's been awful. I'm not saying I'm not saying Matt Schaub sucks, y'all. I'm saying he's been awful this year. He's still a top ten quarterback. He he he's he honestly he's been awful since like the end of last season. Yeah, no, he has, he has, he has. I can admit Matt that. garbage. Matt garbage. Laundra Matt, Matt garbage. Fuck all you. Um but Welcome I got... Matt, shower Matt. Well okay, Bears Lions. Uh the bear the Bears have been looking really good lately. They're looking incredible. The Lions are very the Bears look very disciplined, while the Lions look very undisciplined. I think that's going to be enough for the Bears to win this one on the road. Marquee. I'm never picking the Lions again. Didn't I tell you all that? <laughs> for the rest of my life. But you got another team with a quarterback I still don't fucking trust. Like, oh, okay, it's Jay Cutler. He does this every season. Every season he starts hot and he wins a few games late. And then everybody wants to say, this is the year. This is the year he t- he's turning the corner. And, dude, No. Like, I, I think they win this game because I told you I ain't never picking the Lions. And even if I was, I'd still pick them. But I don't see why this would be any different. Yes, I like Tre- Tressman is amazing. Like, you know what I mean? He's a genius. But Jay Cutler is a knucklehead. He's a fucking jackass. <laughs> Simple as that. He's a ja- you know what I mean? He's a jackass. He, he's as hard-headed. Like, 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 when I'm not doing anything, I babysit my niece and nephew. My nephew, no matter what the fuck you tell him, he's going to do what he wants. That's Jay Cutler. Like, you can tell him that the stove is, is had just boiled water, and it's on the highest it can go, and it's hot as shit. He's going to slap that eye because he's that crazy. That's Jay Cutler. That's Jay Cutler in a nut. Fuck that guy. But they win the game. <laughs> You're awful. Phil. Uh, I also have the Bears. Uh, I think the Lions only won last week because they played a very, very bad Washington team. Um. Yeah, yeah. I pretty much agree that with makes all me you so guys. Sad. And by the way, they won. Detroit won for the first time in Washington. I think someone said ever. I don't know yeah, if that's true. No, it was like the first time in like I think it's been like forty years or some okay. shit yeah, like that. The last time, no, I think it's longer than that. The last time the the Lions won in Washington, they were the Boston Braves. Wow. Yeah, they 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 they've lost the last twenty one games against the Redskins in Washington. That's incredible. That is incredible. How, how does that happen? But. Um, I think I also, I was going to put this game on here, but I don't know if, um, oh, they're on a bye. That game's not this week. Red Raiders and Redskins. Oh no, it is this week. I'm just looking at the wrong week. Um, they, I was going to put this on here, but I don't know if Terrell Pryor is going to play. And if Terrell Pryor doesn't play, that kind of changes everything. So does it, does it as bad as the Redskins have looked? 
Does it? I don't know, but I, I was going to pick the rate. Look, I want to say this about the Raiders. Yes, they got killed by the Broncos, although the game was a lot closer than the score said, especially if you watched it. At the and, end. At the end. At, even, look, if they stop when it was 30-16, to 16, it's third and one. They hand the ball off to Monty Ball, and the Raiders stop him, and he barely extends and makes a great second effort play and gets the first down. And as soon as he did that, I said, game over. If they stop him, and then the nine, the, the Broncos would have punted the ball out of their own end zone, and the Raiders wouldn't have got, would have gotten the ball with nine minutes left in the fourth quarter and only down by two touchdowns. Who knows what would have, I'm not saying they would have won at all, but they would have made that scoreboard look a lot prettier than what it ended up looking. And, I mean, no team did anything wrong. I think Terrell Pryor even played well. But it's just that they are just so much less talented than the Broncos. Like, that, that's what there was to me. Like, the, it didn't matter what they could have done. The Broncos just had such a better team than them. Um, but the Raiders played very tough. They look very tough. But the Redskins look awful. And if Terrell Pryor plays, I, I'd be picking the Raiders to win that, that one. I, I guess we're throwing it in here since I already talked about it. We only had a few games left anyways. Go, Markeem, Phil, very quickly. What, Redskins and Raiders? Yeah. Psh, man, RG3, it makes me want to cry because y'all know that's my boy too. And they just kind of threw him to the wolves. I think about week six, though, he'll start he'll start coming together. I mean, I think it, he'll get right. It'll be like, yeah, I know Adrian Peterson, even though he ended up with like 2,000 yards last year, he struggled until about week six. Yeah. You know what I mean? So... I think this would be the week you start to see him kind of get back to what he was, and I, I think they win. So, um, what, Marquine, What would you like? What to what point does it take to where you would say like maybe like the Redskins should sit RG three? Like, I think he should be sitting right now. Right? You already think now? Yeah, I thought after week one he should have been sitting. I thought during that game they should have took him out. That's uh, I just that, wanted, I like just, he he was really bad. Though. Right, I just wanted to bring that up because I think that's very you know I mean this is a young kid that you know we talked about could, you know we might be looking back at last season's playoff game as the end of you know the the downfall of RG three which hopefully that's not the case I really hope not. I, I hope to God not. That, um, that boy is special. I'm telling y'all, if it wasn't for Andrew Luck, y'all would hear me gush about him all the time. That boy is special. But uh, I'm I'm gonna go with the Redskins. I'm gonna go out on a limb uh, on this one. Not that big of a limb, but um. If the Royal Fox plays, it could be, you know, it could go either way, but I don't know. We'll just, I think the Redskins got to get a win sometime. Fair enough. I guess I'm going with, the, that's my theme this week, I guess. I don't know. Um, next game is uh, Jets, Titans. The only reason this is on here is because both teams are 2-1. and, one, and Which one is of, insane. And one of these two teams will be 3-1 and one after this game. That's just, crazy. Just crazy. Um... So, me personally, I honestly have no idea who I'm going to pick yet. I'm going to let you guys argue for a little bit, and then I'll make my decision. Uh, Phil, do you have a pick ready? Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, uh, look, can I guess, Phil? Can I guess? <laughs> you going with see. the Titans, Phil? You going with the Titans? Go ahead. What do you think? You going with the Titans, Phil? You're right. I'm going with the Titans. <laughs> if y'all don't know, he hates the Jets. Like, completely hates the Jets. That's not why. That's not all. I mean, it's hard to believe, but that's not why I'm picking Tennessee, but... Um, probably does have something to do with it. But I'm going with Tennessee. Tennessee has honestly have looked kind of impressive over all everybody they played. Chargers, they, could, they, they they arguably could be three and zero. They almost beat the Texans, which the Texans are who they are with Matt, uh, laundry mat. But, <laughs> but laundry mat. I got Tennessee. I the, I mean Jets are just they got a good defense, so it's going to be close. But I got right. Tennessee. Marquine. I'm kind of like you, kid, but uh, hmm. I'm gonna go with the Titans just because I I I, I trust they'll they'll get the ball to Chris Johnson. You know I mean, however they need to, and they're just kind of like they're kind of out tough the Jets. You know what I mean, that's what I think. I, th- I think I'm gonna pick the Titans too, but it would not surprise me if the Jets play better. We didn't talk about this, but we probably should. Uh, Geno Smith versus EJ Manuel. Uh, Geno looked really good last week. I mean, he threw those dumb interceptions, but he looked really good, I thought, for a rookie. And EJ... 40-plus times threw the ball. Hey, Marquine, he didn't look well. But um, 
EJ has been playing better. If he keeps his turnovers down and the Jets defense plays as well as it does, it could be something special. I think it was Smart Football that tweeted, I know we all like to laugh at the Jets, but honestly this defense is playing at the 2009-2010 AFC Championship level defense right now. And can Geno Smith be better than 2009-2010 Mark Sanchez? Eh? We'll see. I'm gaining more and more confidence by the Jets, though, each week. Like, I'm starting to think that them winning seven, eight games isn't so ridiculous. I know I predicted them to go 5-11 and 11 or 6-10. and 10. They're, When their defense is playing that good, I mean... Hey, like- you know this random guy on ass? He tells me, so you ready to admit you were wrong about EJ Manuel yesterday? Oh. I'm like, after that game? <laughs> this, is the, this is the game I have to admit I was wrong? This one? <laughs> Are so, you crazy? So talk about it. Talk about the game and EJ and what you predicted. I, I mean, I didn't, I didn't see a down in the game. I just saw his numbers. <laughs> but either way, what did you predict? Um, I, I thought that he would play awful and the Bills would win. That's what I thought. And he looked, he did 15 for 41. He, he, looked, he looked awful, but he lost. So. <laughs> he threw the ball 40 times. Stupid, stupid. That's why you're the Bills. <laughs> Mark, the, I'm, using, I'm using that quote. That's why you're the Bills. Can we get the trademark? You're the Bills. You suck. Yep. <laughs> you're the Jack. I was listening to that video the other day. I don't understand why the Browns fired Pat Shermer. Like, what the fuck? You're the fucking Browns. What did you expect? You're the Browns. <laughs> you suck. <laughs> but anyways. Like, uh, that's, that's like the remedy in sports now. Just fire the coach. Like, dude, if you ain't got no talent, y'all going to lose. That's how it goes. By the way, it is on Mark Keem's record that week two against the Patriots was the only week all year that he will pick the Jets. So, oh, yeah, so I had to pick the Titans. <laughs> he has no choice. We're all picking the Titans there. Uh, next we go to Eagles and Broncos. Just for, for the record, this game has, like, the biggest spread for the over-under, like, in years. Like, the, the over-under is, like, 60. Like, they're expecting the, they're expecting the Broncos to win, like, 30 to 27. Which can happen, obviously, but it's absurd for an over/under. But uh, what are your guys' thoughts on this one, Phil? We'll let you go first. Um, I'm not even gonna like. By inter- the way, our three teams, our three teams close out the week this week, so that's kind of cool. But go, Phil. Um, I'm not even gonna try to entertain the fact that I think Philly is gonna win this game, but I do think it. You know, it could be close early, maybe. Um, just with Lashawn McCoy, but um, he's a beast and he's set good this year. I think, thanks to Chip Kelly. Um, but or anything to this town. But Denver, I want to say one, just like a few seconds to say this. Denver, of course, this is how Denver's playing. As I picked them to win, a, like I picked them to go to all the way and win the Super Bowl for the first time. I don't pick the Patriots. This is what they're gonna they're gonna like freaking dominate everybody and then choke in the playoffs. I'm feeling it. I'm just saying. I don't know why I feel this. I just feel this now. Like it's starting each week by week. I was like, there's no way that Denver can just win every, like every week. But they're winning this that, that way this week. Um, I I, we, I, we, I tweeted this. But I was gonna say, uh, I'm holding on to that Brady 50 touchdowns because that might not be half. That might be gone after. The- yeah. I mean, I think. I think Peyton will probably maybe slow down a little bit as far as touchdowns uh, from here and ne- here to there, but I think he's he's got it. He's uh he's gonna be can come real close to that record, uh, which he already has forty nine himself. Uh, he's second on that list. So, but that's beside the point. I've got Denver winning the game. Uh, Plus, two, so. I got Denver as well. They're at home. I do think that the Eagles are gonna put up a fight because that Denver defense doesn't look that Denver defense. Is Champ Bailey is Champ Bailey back yet? That's the key. Yeah, I don't think he is. And if he's not back, sold out too. Right? Then I th- that Denver defense hasn't looked that good to me. Uh, they give up a lot of yards, and I think Philly could maybe take advantage of that if Michael Vick doesn't turn the ball over. Not saying that I think it will be like. I'm not even saying Philly will win. Will it be close? Uh, I think I think Denver will eke out between 10 to 14 points. Um, especially if Champ Bailey doesn't play. If Champ Bailey plays, then that changes everything. But Ooh, I, didn't. I think Denver will will win decisively. But I wouldn't be surprised if Eagles put up some points. Denver You're, is thirtieth against the pass. I did not know that. Yeah, I told you their pass defense is terrible. Wow. All right, go ahead, go ahead, Markin. That's what I was saying. The Broncos are going to name the score against the Eagles. <laughs> Like, they'll call off their dog. Like, this is my team, and I'm just being honest. We're going to score on them because 
they ain't got no they ain't got no defense and Michael Vick does play better on the road. He he I don't know why, but he does. The Eagles in general play better on the road. We 0 and eight in our last eight home games. <laughs> think about that shit. But get away from them fans. <laughs> But man, they like they they gonna do whatever they want against this defense. Like Tom Tom Brady, whoa, Peyton Manning go. Peyton Manning is just gonna go nuts. Like I fully expect it. As I told you, every play, as long when when Decker, Welker, and Thomas are in the game, somebody is open, and we and we got one of the worst pass defenses in the game. So a couple people would be open. <laughs> like they 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 gonna murder Fun murder facts. and Paul. Denver is 30th in pass defense. What Philadelphia is, is 29th. 29th, I figured. They're going to name the score on us, man. They are it's first against the run, too, though. I didn't know that. Who? Denver's first against the run? Yeah, first against the run. Ooh, that's tough. I didn't know Murder. That. So Murder. And have a good game. <laughs> but Murder. Still. Murder. All right. 20, so 21 points at least. Oh, Murder. Wow. All right, then. It's like hero picking itself. No, that's not your um, all right, Phil, next we got your team and your big moment, but we'll get to you in a second. Patriots, Falcons, Markeem, start it off. Um, somehow Tom Brady does it. Don't ask me how. It's just a gut feeling. Like It's one of the times I'm going with my gut. I'm, I'm pretty sure this dude's hearing, hey, you're not playing well. What's happening? Um, y'all ain't playing well in general, even though that defense is playing a lot better. But uh, y'all ain't playing well in general. I just think that he has a big game for no other reason than me just thinking that he's Tom Brady. And he has a big game and they win. I. Well, we all know you're picking the foul. Pick just the get the Y. Oh, really? Really? I'm actually, kind of, I'm actually kind of bummed that you were picking them. That was going to be like my big reveal. And I was like turning, I was turning the day that Phil might possibly turn. Um, (laughs) But yeah, I'm picking the Patriots as well. I have no evidence for it other than I just saw this Falcons team play and they have a lot of injuries, but they have a shitload of talent. And Akeem Tlaib has been playing well against the top receiver. So if they lock Akeem Tlaib on Julio Jones, I don't know. Statistically, he's been the second best corner in the game. Do you know who the best is? Uh, What's his name? Uh, Joe Hayden. No. Who? Brett Grimes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he, yeah, he got them interceptions. That is true. That from is the, true. From the Miami Dolphins, he picked off greatness. <laughs> you finished. Jesus, he picked off Jesus. Um, but yeah, I'm picking the Patriots too. Gut feeling. Uh, I don't know. I think somehow they eke out a win, and everyone will complain about how the Patriots played a team with a lot of injuries. They caught the Falcons at the right time, and they did catch the Falcons at the right time. Uh, Tony Gonzalez possibly has a concussion. But it is in Georgia, and Atlanta is incredible at home. Their home record I think, is like the second best in the NFL behind the Seahawks. But I'm gonna pick the Patriots. Got a feeling. Here it goes. Are you guys ready? Yeah. No, we're ready for you to just pick the Patriots. Stop. Stop building that fake drama. <laughs> I am sorry to build you guys up for a week. Um, Atlanta. I'm not picking Atlanta in this game. I know oh. all the advice starts crying. Walk away from the computer right now. You don't get your big moment. But it's because of how they played in the Dolphins game is why I'm changing my mind. Um, I think that not that nothing take nothing gets away away, not to take anything from the Dolphins. Um, the game the Dolphins won that game. Um, but I think with injuries uh, on Atlanta side, I also think um, they didn't. I mean, they are at home, so I think this game is still going to be as close as I thought originally. I just think New England pulls this out um, with Gronk. I, th- I don't know if Gronk uh, will play, but if he plays, I definitely have New England. Um, I think he might not play though. But anyways, um, considering it's a Sunday night game, he they might be able to squeeze him in. We'll see. Um, but I I think that just with Atlanta, how they played against Miami, and I think now nah, at home, like I said, if they wasn't at home, I really would have New England. Uh, but I just and Atlanta's my I have them going to the Super Bowl. But I just think this uh, uh, New England pulls this one out this week. I think the chemistry is getting better. I think I'm like Markeem. I think Brady's going to have a good game. Um, and I just say, I mean, I just don't think Atlanta has anything to stop us on defense. Not saying that our offense is crazy. Our offense is some, you know, miraculous change all of a sudden. I'm not saying that. I just think that they'll get what is, you know, they don't have anybody that's going to shut down any receiver or anything like that. So I think Brady will have time. They don't have a pass for us. Brady's going to play like he's under the influence of something this weekend. I'm telling you, I just got a gut feeling. They're going to go nuts. But uh, yeah, I have, I have, I have no winning. 
Well, everybody was waiting for it, but maybe we'll we'll see it. I better if they get killed. I better see you be picking the Bengals next week. I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna say that at Cincinnati, at Cincinnati. I better be seeing you pick the Bengals next week if they get killed. We shall see. I was waiting for this big moment. I thought this was gonna be a great day because I picked the Patriots for once and you picked the Falcons. That would have been incredible. It would have. It would have. But. Fuck you. Sorry, I just... <laughs> Fuck both of you. That was my big moment. I'm picking the Patriots when everyone's picking the Falcons. Oh, I thought I was going to say it was a hero pick. Fuck you guys. All right, next we get to the biggest game of the week in either sport, in my opinion. Re- really? Really, dog? The we just stage, talked about the stage. The stage. The stage. It's Monday night. Two undefeated teams. Two Good hot deal. teams right now. It's a big deal. What college football game is bigger? What, LSU, Georgia? Maybe. It is. It is bigger. Okay. Yeah. It is. It is. Shut the yeah, fuck but, up. But, but that's that's the beauty of the college football season. Oh, bad. <laughs> this is the equivalent of a, the number six ranked team in the NFL versus the ninth ranked team in the NFL. This is actually very scaringly close to the equivalent of that, now that I think yeah. about it. Um, all right, this is my team, so I'll go last. Uh, Phil, start it off. <laughs> this is going to be funny. Um, I've got the Saints winning this game. Now, I picked the Dolphins last week against Atlanta. This week, I'm picking the Saints because I just don't think Miami can stop um, with their with their, with their their uh, injuries on the line now. I don't think they can stop Drew Brees. And I just think it, I think they'll be going back and forth, but I think Drew Brees will pull it out. Um, I got the Saints winning, and it's Monday night. Um, but uh, I, would not, I would not be shocked if Miami won, but I just think, like I said, I think it's the Saints offense is going to be too much. Jimmy Graham um, and uh, the rest of the company is going to – Marcus Colston, you know, guys like that. And, of course, Drew Brees is just going to pull this one out against Miami. Um, and Miami having to go on the road after a tough win against Atlanta. So, Marquee. Rob Ryan is the greatest mind in the NFL right now. Y'all niggas know they top 10 in total defense right now? Yeah. That was the worst defense in the history of football last year. Top 10. I'm just saying. Like, I know they hadn't played against the best offenses in the world, but that's still incredible. Like, when you think about it, when you think about where they were and where they are, kind of incredible. They're, they are fourth and New England is sixth in passing. That's crazy. That, that's ridiculous. <laughs> just just ridiculous. So, obviously, but, when they play in two weeks, the score of that game is going to be 16 to 12. <laughs> Hell no. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I got the Saints, too. I'm sorry, kid. Just – um. They're catching your team at the right time. Uh, I think Drew Brees is going, you know, kind of do work. They've been protecting them. They've actually been, you know, uh, pretty um, pretty diverse too, with a lot of like, you know, uh, design screen passes and stuff like that. And honestly, the thing they've done, they've kind of toned down on the pace. Like if you notice, like the 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 Saints are not running as much no huddles they did before. You notice that, right? Right. Like uh. I think that I think that's gonna help them for later on in the season too. I, they look really good, man. Like I remember when you was like, this team is like really overrated. When you yeah. was like, people people were saying it, uh, kid. They're kind of looking like what people were saying they were going. Yes. <laughs> hey, but I uh, said, yeah, I said I did. I said they would go ten and six. It's not like I predicted them to fucking go seven and nine again. Yeah, yeah, but I, I got I got the Saints though. It should be a close one though. All right. Go ahead and pick your Dolphins. Just tell us why. The Saints are going to kill us. Wow. Wow. This is style. Not only is this the hardest matchup on the calendar, this is stylistically the worst possible opponent at the worst possible time. First off, it's on the road, which in and of itself is going to be brutal. And in and, and one of the best home venues. Yes. In the NFL. <laughs> Home of Super Bowl. We, we have arguably the worst offensive line in the NFL. Their defensive end right now, Cameron Jordan, that they just drafted, is getting rave reviews. I think Pro Football Focus has him ranked the second best defensive end behind J.J. Watt. He is playing incredible right now. He is going to massacre our line. He is going to get through with no issues whatsoever. Tannehill right now is the most sacked quarterback in the NFL, and he also has the most fumbles of any quarterback in the NFL. New Orleans has been generating a lot more turnovers lately, and Rob Ryan just runs so many unique blitz schemes. 
and he's just going to fucking massacre us. Daniel's not going to get the ball off. He's just going to constantly get different blitz packages that are going to kill us. Then we got Drew Brees, who in and of itself is going to be really hard. The key, though, Jimmy Graham. Miami struggles guarding athletic tight ends. We got murdered by Jordan Cameron. We got murdered by Kobe Fleener. We didn't get murdered by Tony Gonzalez, but he's not really – he's not as athletic as he once was, and he had a concussion. Um, Jimmy Graham is the worst possible tight end we could face in the NFL. He's mm. not just young. Oh, not, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. He's one of – Tony o Gates, Vernon Davis. Gates? One of those guys. Uh, Vernon, Davis is, Vernon Davis is probably worse. I'm not so sure about Gates. But Tony – that man got a 40 inch vertical. What the hell wrong? That with man you? got a 40 inch vertical. He's also, <laughs> I mean, he does. He just he has a, he has a lot of years on him. Well, that that's true also. But go ahead. I'm sorry. Jimmy Graham dude. is super athletic. He's gonna create so much space. He's gonna get open very easily down the seam. Our linebackers can't cover shit. The reason we switched out our entire linebacker core over the offseason, we banished Kent Carlos Dansby and Kevin Burnett, and we brought in Philip Wheeler and Danell Ellerby, was because they were younger. They were arguably supposed to be faster, but the main thing, they were better blitzers. They were better blitzing linebackers, and that's kind of what the Dolphins do. But they are nowhere near as good at pass protection as Dansby and Burnett were. And Dansby and Burnett weren't that good against tight ends. So I think Jimmy Graham is just going to obliterate us. Demetri Patterson, our starting cornerback, is probably not going to play. So that means Jimmy Wilson is going to play as a nickel cornerback, and he's not that good. And Demi and Jimmy Graham is just going to get wide open the whole game, and we will not be able to stop it. And then we won't be able to get anything going on offense because our offensive line won't be able to guard Rob Ryan's defense, and Tannehill might very much fumble once or twice again. And we're on the road. That game we played last week against the Falcons, we play that game in the Superdome, we lose by 10 points. We played it because, just because I think that we got a lot going in our favor. We created turnovers at very opportune times. Um, but that, that shit doesn't happen every week. And we can't create a turnover on a punt return every week that leads to a touchdown. We just can't. We couldn't stop the Falcons when they were driving until the fourth quarter. But I think the Saints are going to get out to an early lead. It won't matter when the fourth quarter comes around and the lead's just going to grow. We won't be able to get anything going on offense. We won't be able to cover shit on defense. Darren Sproles is the type of running back that we can't cover. Run, running backs like him and Ray Rice that just abuse us. When running backs like Reggie Bush and, and but Darren Sproles and Ray Rice fucking abuse us. We always struggle to get backs like that. We do better getting after big, strong power backs. That's why we struggled so much with Jason Snelling and Jeff Quiz Rogers. We just can't get those little guys. And they're running all over the place as offensive weapons. They're creating, they're finding so many open holes and we just can't ever get to them. So, yeah, I think Darren Sproles is going to kill us. Drew Brees is going to kill us. Jimmy Graham's going to kill us. And we won't be able to get anything going on offense. It's on the road. I think we're going to lose by 14 to 20 points. I do not think this will be pretty. Um, can they win? Maybe. And if they do win, it says a lot about them. But so many things stylistically just do not go in our way. We're injured as hell as well. We don't have Cameron Wake. We don't have Paul Soli. I'm not confident. This is the loss. I already have this pencil wow. as a loss. We're moving on. Yeah. I picked against the Dolphins and picked the Patriots. <laughs> that 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 has to be a first. That does have to be a first. But yeah, I'm I'm not looking forward to this game. But I mean, I'm looking forward to it because my team will be on a national setting and we'll actually get some respect. But you, you we did not have not only did we not have one primetime game last year, we only had one game at four o'clock. Like, are you serious? Yes. That's fucked up. Yes. That's how bad everyone the, the fucking the Chiefs. The Jaguars, the Rams, the Jets, the Titans, they all got Monday and Sunday night games last year. We got nothing. So we're back to prime time, and it's legit prime time. It's a good time to be in prime time, but I think it's going to be not pretty. Uh, any other comments for the weekend as a whole? Uh, this this is drastically better than last weekend. Yes. I, was, I was embarrassed by football last weekend. Like, y'all, like everybody that played a game, Except everyone that won should all be ashamed about about how y'all played. It was just it was a bad. You had niggas blowing out niggas by seventy points. You had turnovers galore. Just a horrible weekend. I'm almost ashamed to be a fan, but this week should be a lot better. Yes, 
Um, and so we all know, Hero picks watches for the weekend. Um, I got UCF beating South Carolina. Phil has Wisconsin beating Ohio State and the Giants beating the Chiefs. Marquise has the Rams beating the 49ers. Should be a fun weekend. And we'll be right back here next week. I have Big Red at 310. My two I guests. Well, when, oh, we didn't go too long, yeah. And 9 or 10. We're all, yeah. And uh, we hope you all enjoyed it. And we are out. Goodbye. Bad call. <laughs> oh, he got it in. Did you get it in? Uh, yeah, he, he got it in, but I never stopped recording. 18 and 1. <laughs>